Jack, no. We got the big guy. We got the big guy. Uh, it's a morphing look. I was just saying, he walks in. It's just a new, it's new, new, new little sauce every time I see it. I don't know. I feel like that's a good, that's a good thing. A lot of what we're going to talk about today probably is just the, the ability to change and morph and move, mm. move through what life is kind of uh, bringing you or what you're attracting, you know what I mean? But great to have you as always. I mean, this is a, I think your, your hands down are like, what's, is there a word for this? We're like recurring, re reoccurring. Yeah. But you're, you're a pinnacle guest. Like I've had, that, I think it's also just a scheduling and timing thing, but um, yeah, I was just saying to, I was just saying to you out in the backyard, I don't know what's going on. I think it's just as I dive more and more into self, like it takes a lot of solitude mm. really, you know? Yeah. So, and I also just being a little bit more observative of what's out there and what I'm giving my attention to. And am I aligning with this or these people? Mm. Is it kind of more draining for me to be in this space versus rewarding and of evaluating that from the seat that I'm in, which is a changing seat, obviously like a morphing seat, even and I find myself more and more avoiding putting myself in any situation that isn't completely organic and make me feel a certain way, which is, you know, I think it's an awareness thing, you know, just gaining awareness and really trying to be conscious of your, how you feel around people and doing certain things and dedicating my energy to just what lifts me up or what elevates me or what makes me feel a certain comfortability, whatever it may be. Um, I find myself wanting to kind of avoid being around people. I really, I really do. And I don't think it's anything to do with like a negative worldview or being pissed off, you know, or, you know, clashing with other people. Mm. It's more so just like, hey, I'm just in this space where, you know, I just, when I am giving that energy, when I am ready to give it out and be, be accessible, I just want it to be in the right, in the right area with the right people and the right receptors, you know, people that can actually add value and, mm. And that exchange. So you're, I mean, dude, it's weird. I, how long have we been here? Four days, five days. The only guy I want to sit down and do a podcast is here. <laughs> it's Evan Britton. What a guy. Man, thank you, dude. Yeah, but that's exactly how it feels. Seriously, it's, uh, I think, our fourth show. But all these, all these conversations, I mean, we were just- Fifth, really. Is it our fifth? We did three in Montana. You're right. We did one in Austin. It was our fifth. It's our fifth. I was thinking about it earlier. Yeah. And, and uh saw the conversations are some of my favorite ones oh yeah bro the one at the bar had an epic vibe the montano vibe yeah dude we caught a crazy wave out there <laughs> <laughs> we caught a tidal it wave out there epic. yeah it's absolute tidal wave i love that what an interesting uh little like link up that was it's such it was an so random and like but you know, nothing yeah cosmic nothing it's i guess nothing's random but just like that kind of just rolling it back to what I was just saying about like mm, yeah. where, who I want to give attention to. And like, I, I'm like super <laughs> private for me to call a dude. I don't know. Be like, yo, come out to Montana and just like <laughs> link up. I got to fucking, you know what I mean? Like for what whatever. was that? When was you? that? No. What, what was, was it? that? I know that you were, we talked about it. You guys were big fans of hot boxing. Yep. And the change happened, and you found yourself watching an episode one day going, yo, what the fuck happened? Where's that been? Yeah. And there was some other sensation inside of you that said, let me reach out to this guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think maybe one of the, as I'm reflecting more on myself and how my life's gone, it's probably my greatest gift you know like i'm not like a classically gifted musician i'm not a i'm not a you know i have none of these official trainings in anything like i'm i kind of feel like i'm good at certain intangible things that i'm able to figure out how to put together and monetize and grow something out of you follow your inner sense right my my intuition even like starting music was like super intuitive and mm. so random had no base mm -hmm. it had no basis like why would you feel like you could do that you know what I mean? Yeah. But I just had a knowing and like there was something internally where any type of logic, like if I was, if I was thinking from the, the head versus the heart, the logic would have said, man, this is like, this like, is a what are we cry. doing? Fuck that. We're yeah. doing music. No, we're playing baseball. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> you know, I do, I do have a good 
a good ability. Steve, relax. Mm. Relax, but boy. I gave him a beef cheek, so he's pretty stoked he's on He's a he's kind of an today. attention hog, this guy. He knows yeah, the camera's on. Know, he's, he comes is. over, he's like he, well, he's unbelievable. Look at him. Isn't he's he like the a best? Little, yeah, he's my favorite, dude. He's the best. He's um, the best. Another intuitive <laughs> another intuitive find. Look at him. Uh man. He's um, the best. But no, seriously, it's it's uh probably what I'm what I'm best at is just like making that pulling the trigger from that from that heart just like feeling like that that would be a great vibe and going for it yeah um and i that was that was really it now definitely like you know something internally also is just like i want to align when, when i you know this whole conversation mm. where this is going already it's just like alignments and who you want to align with and what type of vibe like i just i was really kind of in the middle of like understanding what I want mm -hmm. really out of this all. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I saw that in Montana. Right. I love how you drop right into this. And we always do that. Every time yeah. we've done a pod, we drop right into the meat, the meat of the, the heart of the issue. Yeah. I saw that when I came to Montana and it was super inspiring for me as well. Mm. And I've seen you seek solitude even in the the life that you've chosen man about as being being an artist yeah and your music is so fucking good bro i mean Thanks, it's buddy. so good it's just like it's such a vibe and you see it and people love you mm, thank you i'm bro. driving around la i see people with stevenson ranch hats all the time yeah it's real yeah and I love that. And I'm always like, yo, that's my guy. <laughs> um, love that. And you've cultivated this very intimate connection with your people, mm. which is really powerful. Yeah. And it's a differentiator for you as an artist. I think it separates you, it raises you up in the sea of, I mean, there's like, everybody's trying to do something now. Crazy. Right? Yeah music content whatever it is everybody's trying to do something and watching you that's always been very inspiring um and seeing your journey because that was february of 21 wasn't it yeah it was when we first met when i came to montana yeah. and Crazy. i had just come out of hot boxing you, I feel like in that moment, you were really nailing down on what the fuck you were about to do yeah. over the next year and hanging out with you now, coming to see you. I always feel like I'm coming to see my brother, my family. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Blue, doggo. I wish Johnny was here. Yeah. Skis. All good boys. Skis, the new little brother yeah. that came in this year. Yep. It's a family. It's a family atmosphere. It's a family vibe. And to see you on your journey here from where you were in Montana then, because you were starting to taste this. I was, yeah. You were starting to taste the solitude. And over this year, I have been on nothing but a descent into hermit, my hermit phase. Yeah. Really taking everything down to zero. Our last pod in Austin, you know, I talked about the things I've been going through personally with mm -hmm. family and, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of that, man, I hit a complete wall. I had to totally turn everything down to zero. I turned my podcast down to zero, turned basically everything I was doing down to complete neutral other than spending time with my daughter, teaching yoga, taking yoga. Crazy. And that was such a trip for me because so much of my life has been validating my self-worth through who am I spending time with, what am I doing to make money, to prove myself to the world. Mm -hmm. And so to turn it all down to zero and just go, you know what, I'm not going to fucking do anything, but these three things, spend time with my daughter, do yoga, teach yoga. That was it. And there would be moments 
where my ego would flare up. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, what the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. How the fuck can we do this? We need to be out there making money and doing X, Y, and Z and doing this and that and fuck. Mm -hmm. We're missing out. And I just keep sitting with it. Be like, okay, all right. And the interesting thing was, because it is a process, and to your initial point, man, the only way to know and to get to the place where you can learn and discern what you truly need is to be out there on the field. Mm -hmm. You don't learn shit standing on the sidelines. That's just a rule of life. You have to be out on the field, playing the game, messing it up, putting yourself in action, doing things to know what's going on. For instance, right around that time, a perfect example. I got invited to this dinner. I got invited to this house and then we were going to dinner and it was basically this group of master level healers that I have an immense amount of respect for. And... I ended up going to the house. They were doing these things. We didn't end up going to dinner until about 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then I find myself sitting there at dinner and I'm going, I should have stayed home. I should have just fucking stayed home, had dinner with my mom, gone to a yoga class. Hmm. But I came to this dinner and here I am. I feel totally trapped and I've got nowhere to go. And I did it to myself. And in a moment, it was like, Ed, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. You go out seeking validation and your worthiness through who you're spending time with. Yep. (laughs) And in that moment, I said, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. Crazy. And... It's an ongoing thing because how many times a day, dude, are you texted by someone, called by someone who is desiring your energy, your attention in whatever capacity? Mm -hmm. Let's hang out. Let's grab a drink. Let's make music. Let's do whatever it is. Maybe it's business. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's something in the middle. And you get to decide, you get to have a decision because you are the creator of your life. There's no more, there's no more getting ourselves into a situation and saying, oh, fuck, look, this person and them and (laughs) why the fuck am I here? Man, you make the choices. You're the creator of your life. And there's no more fucking slinking around in victimhood. Can't do it anymore. So, everything is an opportunity to learn more and more about who you are. Right now, and I think it's important what you said, this thing is Mm ever-changing, constantly evolving and moving and transforming and shifting and growing. And your your organism, just on a cellular level, is constantly changing. Water. You know? Literally. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not forever. Maybe you're not going into the cave to be a hermit for the rest of your life. But in this moment right here, right now, that's what feels like is calling you. Because at every turn, you find yourself in a situation and it's just too much. It's too much noise. It's too much energy. It's too much input. It's too much contact. It's crazy, man. That's spot on. Right? Yeah. And so then it becomes about honoring yourself honoring yourself and in the honoring of yourself you really start to fill your fucking cup up man you really start to fill your heart with contentment because i don't know about you man but i've spent i spent 30 i'm gonna be 35 on friday i've spent a good part of 34 years putting myself at the back of the line because I felt as though I needed to be there for everybody. I always needed to show up. And God God forbid I did anything to take care of myself. Why would I do that? Yeah. You know? It's crazy. 
And something really beautiful happens, man, because then you start to align yourself with your divine purpose. Mm -hmm. The universe's plan for you. And through that time, for me, of turning it all down to neutral, when my ego's going, Eb, we're fucked. How are we going to make more money? How are we going to do this or that? Or mm -hmm. who cares about us anymore? Dude, I've been more productive and more successful. Mm -hmm. I've created more abundance and prosperity in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I kind of look at you and I see like... I, it's weird because you're you're we're the same age but you just have like an older you know what i mean yeah. feeling and it's like but ironically i see a lot of my life in your situation a little like we obviously have if you think about it it's similar like we're totally man athletes to artists you, you know, to whatever yeah, the thing and, is yeah you know creators digital creators, create, whatever yeah. you want to call it um but kind of the same feeling where I literally come, I sit here and I'm like, oh man, I, if you told me I, I could go back and I would be healthy the whole career and I get to achieve my childhood dream of being a professional, successful baseball player, mm. I would never trade, I would never trade what I'm doing now for that. Mm. Even my biggest dream as a kid, mm -hmm. you know? So just come sitting from that seat of understanding, like I actually came into what I, truly was just by going through the hardships or or the ride of life mm -hmm. in a way where it's like you know i didn't even have a spiritual sense at that time when i was faced with that but i kind of just stayed optimistic and was free flowing and like yeah i'm gonna do this mm -hmm. you know like and i'm gonna just uh, you know and i can't <laughs> say that i'm like you know i can't say that i'm a, i was because I was in my body then and I'm in my body now. Now I feel like I'm truly an artist and it, it comes out of me and I'm, it, it was all meant to be this. Mm. But in the beginning of music, I didn't feel that way. Mm. For whatever reason, I just had this confidence. It was almost like so ego driven. Like I can't let people see, I can't, I'm going to lose now. Like <laughs> my whole life I was, I realized that it was so driven by external validation and, and, for whatever reason, that was how I operated, even though I have great, I, I, think have, we great, all do, yeah. I have great family and like uh -huh. great leadership, like not selfish people or, you know, very mm. just great people and normal, you know, and not looking, my parents, not, neither of them ever looked for an ounce of attention somewhere else. Like, so I don't know where, I think it's generational and just living in the world I'm living in, but, and also just like- It's a cultural. Being a competitive person, like uh -huh. I, you know, I have that innately in me where I wanted to be fucking great and I wanted to be better than, you know, I wanted to be, I didn't really realize as a kid, but like, it's really just a competition with yourself, but it, really my competitiveness was just like, I'm going to be the best at this around here. So everyone knows I'm the best and, mm. you know, all my success, like I was kind of hitting every mark, like the bait that had this vision in my head of how my life's going to go. And it was hitting it perfect. And then rug pulled out from under you, you know, really didn't have anything. I couldn't, I was done like that in an instant, mm. like it never felt the same. I couldn't. So, you know, my whole point about this is just like, when I look at you, I'm sure you feel this way. It's different because, you know, there's a little more statistic based in music. Like, Ooh, my music is streaming. Well, I'm good. I'm good at this. It's growing mm -hmm. where you're building something and there's measures like we could, you know, I remember messaging you, I think a few weeks ago about hitting like a hundred thousand. Yeah. And when I remember when I met you, I was trying to tell you to get on I social know. media, like <laughs> yeah. and telling you this, you would kill it. Yeah. And it's starting to happen, which is, yeah. you know, of course. Um, yeah. But you, you're innately good at this. Like this is right up. This is who you, you are. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So what, what is this so, talking? Well, talking to people. Well, there's just a healing. I don't know what it is. It's, you know, like I said, you kind of have this older mm. wisdom based or get like, and it's really hard to come off truly organic when you're trying to, there's just something about that dynamic. One, it's extremely popular yeah. and oversaturated. Everyone's trying to tell everyone how to, we were just, you were just kind of yeah. mentioning this, like everyone's a contributor and everyone's yeah. a leader and, there is yeah. no audience. The audience is the creator. And, yeah. you know, there, there yeah. is this whole paradigm shift happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so to have, I'm just saying innately, like you have something, 
super unique and special where you just kind of share, you share insight that stands out in a, in a oversaturated space with, and just has its own identity. Mm. So I see, that's how I feel about my music. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have, yeah. I was watching A Star Is Born recently, a great movie and- The new one? Yeah. And there was, with there was Bradley a scene, Cooper. Yeah. And, Who crushed it? He's a rock star. Yeah, dude. Unbelievable movie. I was talking about like there's 12 notes in music mm. and there's like millions of songs created and everyone's just grabbing these 12 notes and oh, doing, yeah, I doing love them that. their way. Yeah. It's like he really loved the way she used those 12 notes, uh -huh. like her choices. Mm. And my sh like none of my music is like, it's just so uniquely me because I have no musical, I'm teach, I'm not taught on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm literally just going off like, yeah the colors i see uh -huh. you know and i think you have that with the way you you know mm. sift through you know delegate it's, it's insight but it's like there's wisdom and it's also just an overall honesty that people can connect to you know what yeah. i mean and so it's just interesting because you are older and i always feel like your older brother bigger brother <laughs> than me you know but like i see even uh, 10 years ago i was kind of going through like uh -huh. when you start out and you're like, am I really doing this? And yeah. <laughs> it's just like, as you're talking about your whole experience and I actually kind of saw it coming a little. Uh -huh. I just, I know you were going through shit. Like we talked about it, you yeah. were going through shit, but then you had the excitement of a new book and you're just, your yeah. whole life's transforming. And it's like, even if it's going exceptionally well, cause I've been in these transformative, it's still sh like, it's rattling. You know? oh, you yeah. It takes a lot of, um, consistent effort and program your thoughts and like yeah. consistency to step back yeah you were saying something earlier and it's like it made me think like happiness is is in finding meaning like the joy of stuff is fleeting joy you know will happen with an experience something happens but like finding purpose and happiness it's, it's really all in just finding meaning and there's meaning in taking a step back and doing nothing mm. if you're able to be like yo there's so much meaning to this like, mm. I don't need to do that. One, yeah. I know it drains me. I've done it a hundred times. I know what it's going to bring me. You know what mm. I mean? I don't, I, I do know that I, I need to, I don't feel like I need to feel. So there is great meaning in stepping back completely. Absolutely. I'm facing, I have some, we were talking about it a little <laughs> bit. I have like similar feelings. Like I'm looking around a very oversaturated world where I'm not super, I'm not connecting with a ton. It's not making me feel great to be out there and so accessible and mm. constantly tapping into this world. What's everyone doing? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, what makes me really happy? I, I'm, I'm just trying to narrow it the fuck down, identify them, clear the rest of the noise out. And there is a lot of solitude in it. There is a lot of, you know, potential of boredom or, mm potential of you know doubt creeping in when you're like taking steps back you're you know proverbially foot off the gas like uh -huh. you're, you're not going anywhere man what are you doing <laughs> which is not it's just that's you, an illusion of the mind it's an illusion yeah it's an illusion and of like the programming really yeah like i'm trying to i'm what i'm trying to say is like once you can it's not going to be a one-time thing but once you can kind of wrap your head around like there's meaning in every, every, all the facets of life. There's oh, so yeah. much meaning to take from like, even just the days where you have one, a good conversation with your buddy, you, have, you know, like totally, that yeah. was productive. Yeah. That was really productive. Yeah, absolutely. What is, uh, what is, how are we measuring success? Great question. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I was Great watching, question. I was watching. I think that's changing right it's now. It's changing right yeah. now it's changing for me especially yeah i'm i'm the whole world though you know what i mean yeah. you see it me too i'm just it's radically changed yeah keep going you're mm. on no no i mean i want to hear I, the rest I, of that point the six the how i measured success it just feels like one of those uh outdated ideas that yeah. i have in my to me like somewhere wired in me like it's starting to be like is it, what is, what are, you, what are we going after here? You know what I mean? Like, what's the, you know, what's the measure of like, I'm fucking, man, I feel great about my life. Like, <laughs> do you see what I'm doing? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Where a lot of that dynamic is changing for me where it's just like, I like, I like feeling um, 
almost just a level of peace that's like massively that's successful oh yeah massively you know and like i never <laughs> never wrap my head around that ever really i'm just i'm just wrapping my head around it really in this phase because i've i've met a i've met a, uh, a girl who's really puts me in this new space and it's she lives life totally different different culture and like made kind of gave me a little like held up a mirror like i see i'm able to see kind of like some of my actions or things mm. that i go to and my habits that are like well, what is that you know mm -hmm. what i mean why where's that come from and who's it for mm -hmm. you know so um just evaluating and it can be painful you yeah know what I mean? it can be extremely painful even even if people look at your life first off doesn't give doesn't matter what the fuck anyone thinks about looking at your life and saying are you doing good or are they doing bad or <laughs> you know what i mean like you have no fucking game. Everyone, it's a one-player game and understanding, and totally, it's constant and it's super. It's constantly evolving, you know. Absolutely, man. But it's a great, it's a great place to be, and it's a challenging place to be. Uh huh. But I know you're in that same like limbo of just like all these new moving pieces, and and really, it's a beautiful thing. There's infinite possibilities in it, you know. Infinite. There's there's so it's infinite. Yeah, everything's yeah. infinite, really. Totally infinite, man. That old paradigm of it's got, we've got to fucking grind it out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard. We got to work. We got to go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. It's over. It it's is. over. I mean, keep doing it as long as you want to do it. Yeah. All you guys out there listening going, fuck you. It's got to be hard. Maybe you want to take a look at that. Is that working for you? Stopped working for me. Mm -hmm. Just stopped working for me. And... What I'm learning and continue to learn every day is that it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. You can actually do less and make more money. You can do less and create more abundance, wealth, prosperity in your life. Because mm -hmm. when you're constantly in that let's go, work hard, get, got to grind, got to get it done, when the fuck is it enough? When do you get to the place where you're going, it's enough. Here we are, bro. This is like the third fucking stunning crib I've met you in. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's off the chain. Keeping Again. The keeping the vibes up. <laughs> Always. Vibes high, bro. Yeah. You know, there. how many people are living in a place like this? And I think that you, you actively are in the state of recognizing your life is a miracle and you've created this yeah. heaven on earth for yourself, you know, and your people. And how many people are living in a place like this going, it's... 100%. Fuck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Guys going fucking wife doesn't stop talking the wife's going this fucking asshole when's he gonna do something for me or when's he gonna fucking you know get more engaged with the family whatever it is you know thousands of things happening and being said and like discontent mm. a discontented sea that people are swimming in mm. and every morning i do 20 minutes of meditation and my meditation practice over the last year or so has really become a listening meditation listening is the most ancient form of meditation and it's the practice it's the original meditation practice and essentially it drops you beneath your conscious mind the fastest out of any other type of meditation that you can do mm. And basically what I do is I sit in a chair, close my eyes, start to breathe. And I just bring my attention to the sounds coming into my ears. I don't have any earphones in. There's nothing playing. It's just mm. starting to listen to the sounds that are coming into my head through my ear canals. And immediately what you realize is that the mind likes to identify and label every single thing that comes into it. Airplane flies overhead immediately. You go an airplane. You get a visual of an airplane in your mind. The laundry machine, a door slams, your dog barks, all this stuff, right? Your mind is constantly labeling and identifying every bit of information that it receives. Mm -hmm. So the practice of a listening meditation is to let go of that. 
just allow the sounds to come into your ears. And yes, your mind is going to do its thing, but little by little, you start to just mm-hmm. break that down and you start to let it go and you stop identifying shit and you stop labeling everything that comes into your mind. And what I've realized lately, mm. there's this idea in Zen and Buddhism and it's basically the most ancient original spiritual precept that exists that all is one. Mm. Everything is one. As an individual functioning in the Western society, especially that can be extremely difficult to comprehend Mm -hmm. because you're going, how is that possible, man? There's definitely stuff outside of me happening that's beyond my control that I have nothing to do with. Absolutely. Sure. Now with this listening meditation, things that you start to, things that you hear as Alan Watts talks about it a lot in particular, but you start to play with this idea of if my eardrums weren't here. Like if I didn't exist, would these sounds exist? And once again, you're thinking, surely they would exist. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But what occurred to me the other day, literally yesterday or two days ago this weekend, as I've gotten really good at not labeling or identifying anything that comes in, I realized that literally every single thing that we come into contact with, sound, visuals, feelings, other people, sensations, we immediately label and identify them. Mm -hmm. What it is, who they are, good, bad. It creates, there's a polar, there's a polarization that happens. There's a charge of positive or negative that comes with the labeling and the identifying, which is another illusion of the mind. Now, there is such thing as the law of polarity in the universe, which keeps everything together. There's a positive and negative ions and all that stuff. Yes. But as far as your mind's identifying structure of your reality goes, that's really all an illusion. So when you come into confrontation with somebody, maybe it's a business deal, maybe it's something personal, and they're confronting you with something and the confrontation is outside the structure of what you deem is acceptable, pleasant, desired, etc. You immediately go into this defense mode Mm. and you feel anger, frustration, sadness, whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, the the only way we get to access these triggers and these these parts of ourselves is when we're confronted with adversity. Mm -hmm. Because when things are good, you don't really learn anything. You know this. (laughs) You learn some things. You learn how to win, et cetera. You learn what what feels good, and that's really important too. But as far as changing your belief system, which is the very lens by which you perceive reality through, Mm -hmm. the only way to change that is to cut through into the subconscious mind when you're triggered by some external challenge. Mm. So... As you begin to break down that labeling and that identifying of things, and you just start to receive, everything is just information. It's just vibration. And the external and your internal feeling, that's all one happening. Mm. That's all one thing that's occurring. But what we do is we get into resistance We get into resistance with the external thing. We get into resistance with ourselves. Depending on where you're at in your own life process, you start to feel anger, sadness. What is the thing that inevitably comes up for so many men in particular is you go, oh, I shouldn't be angry. Oh, I shouldn't be sad. Oh, I shouldn't be frustrated. So now not only are you in resistance to this other person or this other thing, but you're in resistance to yourself. Yeah. And then you go through the whole fucking war of trying to smooth it out, prove your point, be right, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's all just one thing happening 
And if you are this divine manifestation of God's source, the universe, moving through life, and you have a divine purpose, you coming into confrontation or contact with something that feels unpleasant, that's simply just a guidepost. Mm. That's just information on your journey towards your destiny. Mm -hmm. So rather than coming into resistance, be like water, it's just a pebble in the stream. Mm. Just go this way. Oh, okay, God bless you, brother. Mm. I guess we're not supposed to do business Mm -hmm. or spend time together, whatever Mm. it might be. And that feels really painful to the mind. Right. And this whole idea of what's successful, because the mind wants to tell you all these things. And the mind, and this is something, we want to be very mindful about the words that we use because the mind is this infinite fucking tool Mm. it's an infinite computer so vast Mm -hmm. it's incomprehensible consciousness the mind so what we're really talking about is we can call it the head or old programming Mm -hmm. because this is all just the system by which you operate on through your life it's built on programming that you weren't even conscious of that got put in so your ideas about what's wrong and what's right and what's acceptable and what's not and what's pleasant and what's unpleasant at the end of the day when before you've started to really dive into yourself that's all operating way beyond your conscious mode Mm -hmm. for lack of a better term is this making sense it is so to bring that into what we're currently dealing with here (laughs) you know you're finding yourself going into these places going into rooms with people and something in you is just it's off it's not right that's Mm -hmm. all one happening this is part of the experience Mm -hmm. this is not separate from that this is all one thing Right. So here we are in a room, in this party, in this event, in this thing, in this dinner, whatever it is, and you're feeling out of alignment to not to put a neutral spin on the the negatively charged or the icky feeling or the whatever it is inside. Mm -hmm. That's just a guidepost. So let's steer ourselves back to what feels really good and in alignment. Mm But you can really only know that once you've been on the field and you get on the field and maybe you do it a thousand times. We've talked about this, I think. Maybe you do it a thousand times. And the thousand and one time that you do it, you go, "Ah, this isn't right for me anymore. (laughs) Yeah. And maybe around the 500th time, you were starting to get a little tired of it or it wasn't really working anymore. But it took you another 500 times to really nail down, you know what, this shit's not for me. Yeah. And that's okay. It's totally okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is all just a matter of the mind's programming. Right. Or the head's programming. Right. Our belief system, the models that we construct over our lifetime about what we're supposed to be doing and what's successful and what's right and all this shit. Man, there's somebody else way more... There's somebody else way above us that's in charge of all this mm-hmm. shit. Totally agree. Totally agree. I saw, I think Blue sent me the clip. It was, I forget, who did you know the actor was? was talking about just uh, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. I'm going to, we're, we're going to have to pull up the clip. I'm going to butcher it. But it was along those lines, you know, just like, I think they were asking about death and it's just like almost, I, it was something I agree with the belief I'd never really articulated the way he did. And I don't think I can right now, but it was more or less about we're not, it's inconceivable. We can't understand what's happening Yeah. and the angst, like, I don't know, just like this whole dialogue, everything we're circling around. I mean, this podcast is called, you never know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like just like letting go of just needing to know and understanding that just mm-hmm. like having a knowing. Yeah. that you don't know yeah you know yeah um 
and that's kind of how he, he said something along those lines regarding just like death and like what he did, he's basically saying like I don't believe we die it's just but mm. our minds can't you know we can't even maybe there aren't even words to explain like there's a human we're in our brains trying to understand something that maybe is in a we're just a cog in a bigger thing you know so it's like how could we be capable of understanding the entire scope of it and yeah. i think there's a lot of not turmoil but you can resistance put, yeah yeah tons of and, and you think about life and death and just like i forget i think it's untethered soul talk death death is the greatest teacher to life it's mm. because you know you don't need to understand what happens or where it goes and maybe knowing knowing the answer would ruin life mm -hmm. if you knew you weren't going to die how does it change how right. do you start acting what uh -huh. is it you know or or whatever yeah. it may be you know but the understanding of not knowing uh, and and all this whole dialogue that we're happening is kind of weaving through there isn't a right answer to any of it your answer to it like you and I are super aligned in a lot of ways, but your answer to it is still different than my answer to it mm -hmm. for, for you, your day-to-day -day menu of what you need to, yeah. to feel fully you know, fulfilled. Like mm -hmm. everyone's having their own one-of-one -one unique experience. Yeah. So there's, it's, it takes a lot of this reflection and this, I guess a knowing can develop with amount of, the amount of time that you can spend with that self. And you can get away from the distracted, you know, the fragmented thoughts mm -hmm. and emotions. And you really, you know, like do what you did. Go in, I, I'm, I'm in, I feel like I'm literally going into that same hermit mode where I can, the further I fall back, there's a bunch of resistance along the way. Like <laughs> I'm bored, man. Like fuck, you know, like I wanted this my whole life. I get popular and making money and now I don't even want like, <laughs> This is what it was for. Where, where are the bitches at? You know what I mean? Like that, that whole thing. And then all my friends, you know, like I love them to death. You know, all these people that I aligned with and crossed paths with, I, I love them to death. But it, it's like, I wouldn't even say we're, we, we just, I wouldn't even say we like different things now because it's not necessarily the case. I, I don't, I won't, I can't say that. I didn't, every one of those, Every one of those uh, experiences that I had with them, even if it's stuff that I don't enjoy anymore, they were just perfect. Like there were so many great memories and perfect totally. equations and them being a part of the equation was like actually chef's kiss, like perfect, you know, but mm. I don't want to hang out with them anymore. You know what I mean? And I don't want to. That's cool. Yeah. And it, and it is. And it, for a while I was like, it's kind of weird, you know, like I liked, I was kind of becoming before the hermit mode really started to call to me, I was becoming more and more accessible and friendly and pot. We're moving every two months. Every, every, the tastemakers in every city, we're with them like, you know, and they're happy to be with us. I'm happy to be with them. They show us the town. We're all hitting it off. Everyone's partying at my house, of course. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I wanted. This is, yeah. this, it was, it was such a, it almost felt like a victory lap around the country. The tour. Well, not the kind of the Stevenson Ranch home tour that we've uh, been on. I'm uh -huh, more talking yeah, yeah. about what it did to my lifestyle. You get to yeah. a new house. It's dope. Ooh, the weather's <laughs> nice. What girls are around, you know? Uh, what people, <laughs> what are the best restaurants? Yeah, everyone should come back here, play beer pump mine, show the house, you know? What, great, you know, like <laughs> did all that and was, and like really was like enjoying it, like uh -huh. basking in Good. it, basking yeah. in it a little and enjoying it and just, Perfect. And being loved being the super accessible, wow, Mike, Mike is really a cool dude. Mm. That, mm. That's what felt good to have everyone saying that. Like, my, open doors to everyone. Like, <laughs> I don't even know him. I was at his house till five in the morning last night. You know, like, and kind of like got very moved by, because I always kind of, if I think about it, I was kind of an individual. Like I didn't want to be even, I was the popular kid in school because I was good at, good at sports, but I didn't really have a lot of real friends. I was always innately, so. You're the I've, energy center. I've always been that, yeah. right? I've been kind of like that, but then. I get it. Yeah, as I got too. more popular and a little more, you know, more successful, like for me, you know, growing up regular and then getting to this place where we're not, it's not regular anymore. Like it felt great to, I want to not even show it off in a cocky way, sh like open the doors up, 
you know, like everyone's welcome, you know, like, and I, and I loved that and I basked in it and I, and I felt as though you did that. Yeah. And I felt as though like I got moved by the concept of like truly like what more can you do besides make people feel good when, if they're around you and they're feeling good, like I kind of got into that vibe where I was like, in a weird way, it was selfish, but I was also like, I'm of service. Everyone's having a fucking great, they're catching a wave at the crib. Like, mm. um, or we're in yeah. town in Scottsdale and we're, we're kept making great memories with these new guys. And it, I found purpose in kind of making everyone feel good and being Ooh. that guy, you know? Yeah. And then I just got tired of it. I got tired, you know what I mean? I literally got tired and I was just like, fuck, well, because who am I doing this for? Be, like, right. It wasn't, you, yeah. weren't fu you weren't fueling yourself. It wasn't about filling yourself up. Yeah. And I think like any endeavor, anytime we go searching for validation or fulfillment externally, which is part of the path. It was interesting to hear you say that earlier because you kind of put this negative spin on it. Mm-hmm. And you wanted to qualify that you don't come from a family. You come from a family that are very good people mm -hmm. who aren't that type, mm -hmm. whatever that means. Mm -hmm. That being said, that's the hero's journey, bro. Mm. That's the hero's journey. Yeah. You go out, you go out into the world to mm -hmm. slay the dragons, to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. inevitably you realize your home is right here. Mm -hmm. And you, you wouldn't didn't have to go anywhere. And then it's the alchemy of it all. Like you don't, you had, if you didn't go slay, even if you stopped one dragon earlier, right? like maybe you wouldn't, like dragon number seven was the one where he was like, home's back there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know that until I got to number exactly. seven and overcame that one. Exactly. Absolutely. And you know when you know. Yeah. You know when you know. You did that, bro. It's crazy. I, I mean, I really have a knowing of this for whatever reason, and I feel strongly about it, but it's cool to have a dialogue about it and just zoom out and be like, look, I still, I, it's, it's incredible how hard it is or let's not even use the word hard. Just part of the process it is to waver. Mm. What am I doing, man? Fuck, I want to go fuck something, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, totally, I'm going to go bro. drink fucking 15 beers, have my pants down Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> fucking causing a scene on TMZ, you know, like, or whatever. I don't think TMZ would give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunset, that's a regular occurrence these yeah. days, dog. You got... But we were those, Homeless people like we were those guys. Down. We were those guys. We were wild motherfuckers for a while, uh -huh. and it was so fucking true to who I was then. Mm. Which is why, like, I don't. It's like the alchemy of it. I yeah. had to do all those totally, things. Totally, like, you know, totally. um, you wouldn't be here. But but to the point about wavering, it's just like I know I'm doing exactly what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing, and that's where I can. That's when I can, I can sleep good at night. Mm -hmm. I can sleep all right because mm -hmm. I, you know, like my soul can rest because like no we're going the right way you know like yeah but that mind that that waver oh it, you said it earlier it takes a conscious effort because you will be here you couldn't be more successful mike i mean maybe maybe you could be if you like really wanted to get nitpicky right uh, you couldn't be more successful yeah. as far as what you set out to do with your life yeah right yeah. This is far as having everything you need. We were saying it out there. Like me and Blue were at dinner a few nights ago and just like. The dream. Kind of did everything we, we wanted, man. You Amazing. know, like, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it almost sound, you sound weak saying that. Like you're, my programming tells me like, That's that sounds, don't, what do you mean you've done it all? Like you have so much more to do and I know I have more to do, but it's almost like. Um, well, it's a sensation. Yeah. The, it's just like a fuck man i'm not i'm kind of done it doesn't feel like i have to chase anything anymore mm, you uh -huh. know and it's a nice feeling but it's interesting talking about this wavering concepts just like even my positions on how i'm what my outlooks like 
I have this other, you know, you have your alternate position in your mind. Like you sound like a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So here you are, you're in paradise. You're making music out of your bedroom. You got your boys here. Whatever you need is taken care of. You, you know, fuck, what else could we ask for? And yet you will inevitably find yourself sitting on the couch out by the pool going, I feel totally fucking lost. Mm -hmm. Am I doing anything right? I had that literally last week. Mm -hmm. Am I doing anything right? Yep. I feel completely fucking lost. Like there's no floor beneath my feet whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. Holy shit. But then, and it's only because of the work that you do, mm -hmm. constantly, constantly refining, and it's a conscious effort. Yeah. For me, it's I get back to prayer, I get back to just the simple basics, simple basics. Mm -hmm. Take it back down to the process. And I go, yeah, we're fucking doing it, man. This is it. Yeah. This is it. Look at you. I was living in my mom's house for the last eight months. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, just God came up. I got an apartment. It was like nothing. I didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. I was good at mom's. Yeah. Honestly. Mom's a rock star too, right? <laughs> She's the best. It was good. Yeah. My brother's there. I was like, you know, I'm not in a rush. Yeah. I'm doing well. I'm not going to rush to run away from a bunch of people that make me feel fucking great because society might society tells right. me that like this what are you doing Eb, you're are you living at your mom's backwards? bro yeah you're living at your mom's Eb. i've had that the sensation fuck? multiple times at the at my own house like even just visiting well, i'm just like i gotta get the fuck and i'm like dude i'm with the people i'm supposed to be with and i'm rushing to something else like yeah the people that i'm doing all that out there for right here yeah. and i'm not and I'm not I can't be present with them and like I know. and the, but that's the whole reason I'm even out there doing that yeah. is to be able to like for me that's my truth you know I'm sure it is for Absolutely, most dude. most people most men want to it's crazy and just to be able to go I was living in my mom's for eight months mm -hmm. and something just happened it wasn't even I wasn't even looking for a place a kid I met started talking about this apartment he lived in. An ad came up. I was like, oh shit, that's the first place we moved to when my mom moved my brother and I from Brooklyn out to LA. We moved to this apartment complex. Wow. I was like, let me look at it. There, were, there was a couple available. I needed a two bedroom for my daughter to have her own room. Mm -hmm. Dog friendly. Put in an application. Boom, I was approved. And then I'm in there. They got a hot tub, a pool. They got two, they got two big ass pools, two good gyms. Mm -hmm. I was going down to the hot tub Sunday morning with a coffee in my hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, this is the life I dreamed of as a kid. Yeah. It's perfect. Crazy point. You know, it's perfect. It's really, uh, who the fuck was it? I think it was Mike Posner. I saw Mike Posner. I went to Duke with his car. Did you know Mike Posner? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I took a pill in Ibiza, dog. Yeah, and he's he's kind of in this like... Well, that was whole, his whole thing. Yeah. Isn't it? Kind of. It's he, been his thing. Yeah, and he's... he's Which I dig. I really dig Yeah, I, he's, he's a dope dude. A very interesting guy and and just has a cool... I don't know, honestly, there's like a spirituality... Um, I mean, that song... That's a siren call for people... Mm -hmm tuning into themselves i took a pill in ibiza to show avici i was cool mm -hmm. how about that he said when i finally got sober felt 10 years older but fuck it it was something to do yeah or something like that i yeah, love that crazy um so but you're talking to mike what's that you were talking to mike yeah no i i actually saw i saw the a post of him talking about the, that whole childhood idea and just like he put it such a great way but it, it was pretty crazy if you just ask yourself you just said it just like when i was when i was a kid what did i want mm. and it just struck me because i was you know again we're sitting in a house that is way cooler than i ever you know and, and i've had this life and you probably could have ever imagined i couldn't exactly 
and, and it like the way he put it just like shook me a little bit. I was just like, I mean, I, I have to find peace in that, you know? Yeah. And, and I feel like I'm just on that journey just, and I'm becoming more and more peaceful. I feel it, but I'm also innately, I was always a go, go, go. I got to prove everyone. I'm yeah, the man. For sure, Fuck man. you. You guys were all wrong about me. I'm the best. Me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and it's know. kind of part, that's why you're in the NFL. You know, yeah, that's why yeah. I was, it's, you know, whatever. It's, that's why we're here, bro. Right. Right. And uh, even here now. Yeah, exactly. And, and just, I think that's a great exercise for people to do. And, and, and it's not to say that everyone's going to feel that way. Like there's a lot of people that probably had dreams that they haven't accomplished, you know? So if you are, and even knowing that, if you are in the position to say, hey, like like you said, this is what I this is what I wanted. You know? Well why for anyone listening, why do you have dreams that you haven't accomplished? Hmm. I mean playing in the playing pro sports, let's take that off the table because that requires physical gifts and then it requires a shitload of luck, let's be honest. Yeah, it does. Not getting injured. Mm-hmm good people around you, good coaches being mm-hmm. supported. That is a fucking lotto life life path. Yeah. No question about it. But outside of that, as far as like what your dreams are, what are your fucking dreams, dude? Peel it all back. Forget about what the fuck you think it might looks like or what you think you're supposed to be doing. I guarantee you your dream has something to do with you feeling totally fulfilled loved and financially stable Mm -hmm. yeah what else yeah peace peace yeah yeah peace and that's i guess the way when i heard it and the way he put it it just kind of it unlocked a little bit of i totally get what you're saying it unlocked uh some peace that i felt that felt as though i wasn't allowing myself to have it for some reason like you know what I mean? Or, or just like a few days go by and oh, yeah. I don't, I don't make an idea and I'm like, that's that self-worth thing. Yeah. Bro. I'm just, I literally, I literally the same how I, as a pitcher, if I had a bad outing, I wow. mean, you know, I would be, I would totally play it cool. I always <laughs> wore a great social mask, you know, like no, one whatever, but like my whole worth, my whole worth and just like, that was a, uh, it was like, check the box. Like, okay, you can be happy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You fucking. You, you're allowed you had, to be happy you four, now. Three strike, you struck everyone out. You know, you're. <laughs> and then if you didn't, you know what I mean? It was, it was like this whole other, you were this whole other person. It was totally, totally dependent and attached to, re, to the results of it. Even still, I, it's incredible going back to just wavering, even when you know it's right. It's incredible how much I want to waver on that in my, like, doing enough um mike you did great you know like yeah, we, we're doing great it's 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 fucking we're having a lot of success it's better than you ever imagined but you haven't done shit in two days <laughs> and the studio's right in your bed and you can't like you don't have the energy to do it like what's you know what i mean are you not happy like have you not gotten enough from this no you got to keep working like taking it for granted it's all these programming things. And I, th- I wanted to say this earlier, but you, you've been circling around it a lot or just with the childhood aspects. And growing up is actually kind of like, as you're a kid, you're being taught by adults like what you got to do, right? Uh-huh. You're learning. Yeah. And then truly growing up, becoming your own self is unlearning. Yeah, And like, exactly. that's where no one, everyone, no one's, worked. as a society, not no one. There's tons of people that I, it seems as though there's an awakening happening. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of the people, as you look at the world and what's happening in it and where people are giving their energy and attention, you know, a lot of people aren't even, I don't even think they're even conscious of the unlearning process of becoming who you really mm-hmm. are because we're not who, when you're, when you're 21, or whatever those magic ages are, usually it's that ballpark of like becoming, you know, you get out of- You're just going for it. You're going for it, but everything about you, it's not really you. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose where you grew up. Mm -hmm. You didn't choose, you didn't, like these are natural things that were complete. It's it's almost like, is it gonna rain tomorrow? 
or not. Like, Have you read Journey of Souls yet? No. Well, when you read that, it might change your opinion on whether or not you chose your parents. Maybe you did. Yeah, maybe you didn't. <laughs> maybe maybe you did. My point is, well, yeah, though. Yeah, 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 I know. My I'm point, just fucking with you. No, no, you're, it's, it's, but, I, yeah. I've, I've heard people talk about that, and it's yeah. facts. I actually kind of agree with it. But point being is, you get to a certain age, and it's just a bunch of shit other people told you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It really is. I'm not. The unlearning is an absolute reality right. of truly coming into adulthood. Right. It's a it's a inevitable necessity if you are going to become the person you were destined to be. Right. And for a lot of the people not or feel there's that discontent with life or because they're not becoming who they're supposed to be. It's it's that's the only way. It's like mm. the only path to it. Yeah. And I think there's a lot that's why the internet is becoming what the internet is. Like ten years ago you couldn't I couldn't find anything about any of this if I looked. Right, like right. in regards to just casual conversations. Now I open up any of my social media. There's incredible amounts of fundamental dialogue and you know super. You know you can you can bitch and moan about the oversaturation, but there really is. If you want to know something, you know there, there's so much information and such a great asset for this process because yeah. we talk about it a lot. Just touring seeing the world all these we went to so many small towns and yeah. so many places and just like it's interesting you see how people live and you just i mean even the way we're living like we're just in northwest montana the town was probably ten thousand people and uh -huh. like of course they're seeing life a certain way here you know what i mean like this is what they were naturally put into uh -huh. you know and just all the places we've been it's been such an it's been such an eye-opening experience well, really, it kind of just lends itself towards empathy. Absolutely. Just like, man, look how, look how they're living. You know, like, look, who, who, who's to say who I would be if I was put there? You know what I mean? Or if Absolutely. I was, if I was plopped there, or how I would see things. So it's really just a general empathy. Like all of this dialogue that I have, most of it's just an innate, like, something feelings I have where I just, it's like I'm talking about it. But there is really, all the answers are in self you know what i mean and i couldn't i can maybe point you in the right direction i feel like a lot of times you point me in the right direction there's qualities and gifts that people great men before you can teach yeah like that's what great books are you know but totally. the answer truly is in that self your version of it it's really in the self and it's really in the unlearning process thousand percent dude yeah where is the center of the universe i don't know i'd love to hear what you think though <laughs> It's right here, brother. In the heart? Right here. You. Yeah. You know, you're the center of the universe. Anywhere you go, it's just infinite. Any direction. Where do we say it is? It's right here. Mm. It's true. You know, and all of that is totally true. And you can you can make your life whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And those of us that are a little further along the way, it's on us. It's our, the onus is on us to hold the line for those coming up behind us. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And not that we're any better. It's not a fucking like hierarchy thing. It's like a straight line plane and we're all just walking on this path. And some are a little further ahead on the path. Some are a little bit further behind. Right. And those of us that are a little further ahead, it's just on us to hold the line for those coming up behind us. Right. Until they get there. Yeah. And, so, and, and vice versa. You know, there's people holding the line for us. Mm -hmm. Having compassion for us as we make our way through the shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. It's a real guy. It's a real guy. It's always, it's always a lesson when you come through. What uh? Yeah, I mean, we it. talked a little bit about about it outside before we got on, but what's next now? Let's kind of wrap on in, in, in this direction. Just all this shit that we've been talking about, right? Because I feel I want your answer. Then we're kind of talking about it. 
this understanding of what's next, right? There's, it's obviously all the answers are in the now and like being your hat, be here now. It's yeah. obviously, it's all in the now, but with how you're feeling about life and, and even what I was talking about, this kind of hermit or this retraction from certain things, you know, and being in a, being in a profession where, you know, I want to pick your brain on it a little bit because being in a space, we could call it a profession or calling wherever, what you're doing, right? What I'm doing, for lack of a better word, it's, it's about attention, right? Mm. And I guess what I'd love to pick your brain about is like, how, how are you, do you even know, is it something you think about like navigating a place where, yes, this is where you're, you're being called to this space, right? Mm. And this is what you're doing. Mm. And this is the key, this is the path you know right now in your heart. This is the path towards of least resistance mm -hmm. for the current moment and also for, you know, creating mm -hmm. what you want yeah. and, and, and what comes with being in this space, like the funds, the opportunities, uh -huh. the connections. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> all the while feeling, you know, what we've been discussing mainly in this conversation is just, about yeah. drawing back into the self, how do you navigate it? Where do you want it to go for you in regards to just being in this space and where you're being called? And how do you even balance, you know, do you think about this? Okay. Cause this is something I think about a lot as I'm looking at what's next for me, you know? Uh -huh. And I'm constantly, I'm puppeteering my fucking life and knowing <laughs> that I can't, I can't do it completely and there's gonna be a bunch of shit that doesn't go the way. I'm planning, mm. but that's also part of the plan, yeah. you know? So as I make plans, I'm like, you know, all it really is is setting intentions, right? Yeah. So as I'm looking at like, what's next for me and what mine, mm. where are my intentions? Like, I'm all about just kind of aligning my actions with what I want, you know? Yeah. And I think that's how you do it best. Yeah, That's how you try to achieve what you want to achieve and what you're trying to create. So yeah. do you think about that? I know you do obviously, but. <laughs> Do you think about that and what do you think about that going forward with what's next for you or what you're trying to create next for you? Yeah. Yeah. Great question, man. Um, this kid asked me this question on this pod. I think it was last week or the week before. And it was interesting that he used this word because it's a word that I had been thinking about. And he said to me, Eb, how do you, how does one balance their spiritual life with having ambitions and being successful? Mm -hmm. And ambition was really yep. the word that really lit up in my mind and I'd been thinking about that word <clears throat> on my own. And I was looking at my life. I was taking inventory of my whole life and coming to this moment. And it was truly in taking a moment to acknowledge and appreciate coming into this apartment, mm -hmm. this new apartment, which... When I thought about it, I realized it was the first time in my whole life that I had my own space. Never had that before. And I was really acknowledging it and I was thinking to myself, man, Eb, we used to be so fucking ambitious. Like just fucking dominate the world was my goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just conquer the world, world domination. Mm -hmm. World domination type ambition. Yep. And I was thinking to myself, I thought, man, I have no ambition. I have zero ambition anymore. Now what's really interesting about that is having this experience over the last year where I've turned everything down to zero. I've turned it all down to neutral. Which has brought me into alignment with the shit that I'm really supposed to be involved in. No ambition is necessary. Because now the opportunities that I'm just supposed to be a part of 
are spontaneously arising. Let go and let God, man. God is just bringing the shit right to my plate. So as far as what's in the works, the podcast is being revamped and essentially taken over by a pretty big production company, media company. It's out in Culver City. They want to shoot it. They're going to get sponsors and advertisers Mm -hmm. and do it in 4K. And it's going to be on a set in a studio and putting money behind it and really paying me as a host and producer. I own the IP. We split the content. Right. Yeah. Which is exactly what I needed if the podcast was going to continue. And that just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Literally going to a lunch, meeting some people and a guy who runs this thing. It's, it's an app that streams on Apple TV. It's like a whole fucking, Mm. it was perfect. That just came out of nowhere. Not at all my doing. I literally, I put the work in, the hay was in the barn, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and I let the universe do the rest. Yep. (sighs) Events, I'm being really called to do events. I've got an event coming up November 5 and 6. I don't know when this episode will come down, but... Coming soon. We're going to next week. Sweet. November 5, 6 in Venice. I just love connecting with people, groups of people, taking them through, turning them on to yoga, breath work, these various modalities like ice tubs, micro dosing, plant medicine, just turning them on to these ideas, these tools that help them access themselves Mm -hmm. and tune into themselves. How do you feel when you're doing those? I love it. You've obviously like, you had a life where you had a goal, you did it probably felt amazing putting the pads on the first time running out through the tunnel totally this is a totally different experience right totally there's different. no tunnel <laughs> yeah yeah i know yeah you know I, mean? I know it's, it's a trip dude you're kind of like kind of falling into this other position where it it is there is there are alignments to that though like it's you're a on, performance it's yeah a, you're you're coming in like yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's, it has it has similar alignments, but Absolutely. so different. Do you, how do you feel when you're in that space? You just like totally in it. Totally in it. I said uh, I did an event in Malibu. Yeah. Uh, back in July, and I straight up said to everybody, I said this could be a total disaster. <laughs> 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 but you know what? We're here. <laughs> We're just gonna make the most of it. Yeah. You know, and what I learn every time is that. Yeah. When people come together, you could be doing anything, dude. Yeah. But if the energy is right and there's a certain yeah. commitment to the moment, it doesn't fucking matter. We could do anything. You know? Mm-hmm. We could play beer pong, shoot, you know, mm-hmm. shoot pool, hang out, watch a football game. It doesn't matter. It's true. You know? I happen to like to create a space where people can tune into their body. turn on to some tools that they can apply to their daily practices, essentially what I lay out in the ebb and flow book. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, man, because at one point, especially doing the podcast, the podcast was a big experience for me of letting the ego go, Mm -hmm. letting the ego down in this performance, performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I call it a performance because there is a performing aspect to it. But at the end of the day, my performance is essentially dropping into myself and just being available to the moment, whatever that Mm -hmm. means. Yeah. And I think all the great actors, they would tell you that anyway, but, um, letting the ego go, you know, this is not about me being some fucking whatever the fuck anybody wants to call me. This is just about me stepping into my purpose yeah as a teacher because that's really what i've nailed it down as like i'm a teacher Mm -hmm. i'm here to teach people yeah and heal a little too well yeah healing is the healing through knowledge and healing is the healing is the side effect that occurs cause and effect you know yeah healing is the effect that occurs yeah because by me sharing my experience of what i've gone through what's helped me inevitably there are people out there going through similar things that go fuck okay 
there is a way out. There is light at the end of this dark tunnel. Mm. I can get on the other side of this pain. So there's that stuff, the pods coming back, events, and I feel really good about it. It just feels totally in alignment. There's also something that's really fucking out of control dope that's in the works that uh, I'm too early to discuss. Yeah, a little too early to discuss, but yeah. I'll tell you off off yeah. mic, but um it's just like I couldn't have done this if I tried to make it happen. Mm-hmm. I had to let go and let it happen on its own. Now, the side piece to that is that I have been working my ass off mm-hmm. since day one, you know, mm-hmm. for forever. I've worked my ass off hay's in the barn and so i've put myself in a position where yeah and i felt that i felt like the fucking world was crashing over me and i couldn't bear it anymore and so that forced me into the hermit phase Mm -hmm. just to surrender to where i was at and say you know what i need some rest i need to go seek peace and stillness and balance and quiet and rest and that's it And it allowed me this, it allowed the universe this opportunity to start just creating these opportunities that are coming to me now. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's no, you know, there's no resistance, man. My whole thing is just getting out of resistance. Like this last week, like I talked, we talked about it in Montana. You go for a walk and you just tune into your breath. And just the act of walking, you start walking long enough, you start to notice where you're holding on to tension in your body. You're holding on in your shoulders, Hmm. you're holding on in your jaw, you're holding on in your belly, you're holding on in your nuts, your knees, whatever it is, you're holding tension and just letting that go. You let the physical tension go, you get out of resistance in your physical body, then mentally and emotionally, that becomes an easier task. It's more tangible. What do you think is the most effective way? Now that this, I know what you're talking. It's just an exercise of awareness in your body. What do you think is the best way? It's obviously it's a combination of yoga and just this understand like the body being so connected to emotions. Mm. That's probably I'm literally asking selfishly because that's we've talked about it before. Like you striking a chord with just like on a walk, feeling the tension. It's like, I don't know what I'm tense about in my body. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. why? I'm good. You know, like, <laughs> but like, it's been the only thing that. You're good, but there's also a whole lifetime of shit. Yeah. Happening in here. Right. I don't think there's a best way. The best way is awareness. I was talking to my mom about this. My mom is a fucking absolute G. I'm going to have to link up with her. Yeah, she'd be great for the pod. Also, my brother Gus, who's an incredible writer, journalist, mm-hmm. I think he should interview you for a magazine. Like that would be great. Flaunt, Playboy, something really dope. Like, yeah. That would be great. He should interview you. I would love that. He's already talked about it. He's like, yeah, but I'd like to interview Mike for yeah. a story. Yeah, we should story. do it. Yeah, it'd be super dope. Um, but so my mom was talking about this thing. This is a program thing. And a lot of, you know, it's interesting what you're talking about. You're functioning on intuition and then you watch that movie, A Star is Born, and you hear that thing about every music, every song that's ever been made is a coagulation of these 12 notes. Mm -hmm. And you never knew that, but intuitively, you've already tapped into that, yeah. you know, and your music is super unique and plugs in because you're tapped into this. It's this universal language, Mm. essentially, Mm. I think is what his point was in that movie. And maybe that's true, the 12 notes or whatever. Yeah. But like everything I'm doing, the book that I wrote, the ebb and flow, basic tools to transform your life, my whole way of being has been intuitive 
And then I go back and I start reading the Yoga Sutras and the ancient, this ancient practice that long before I was born, 2,000 years ago, this guy basically created this thing. And he just pulled it out of the ether because it was what the human experience is. It's the structure of the human experience. It's neuroscience. It's the physical body. It's anatomy. It's, you know, hormones and neurotransmitters and psychology. And it's all these things just rolled into one thing. Mm -hmm. It's exercise science. And so we naturally plug into these universal languages, these universal platforms that have existed for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And you can really only do that when you are open and in alignment to a certain degree, right? Um, And I say that my family, so my mom, much of my family history is our our life lesson, life teacher has been alcoholism, drug addiction, mental health issues, mm. which led us into 12-step programs. 12-step programs are essentially, it's a spiritual program. Mm-hmm. You always hear that. It's a spirit. The 12 steps are the literal 12 steps on your way to having a spiritual awakening. Yeah. So she was talking, she was referring to this, this precept in program, which is the three A's, the three A's come into awareness. You acknowledge a thing. Mm -hmm. you accept it, you come into acceptance, and then you get into action, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's really the process by which we unravel ourselves Mm. and we change who we are if it's not working for us. Right. You know? Yeah. You come into awareness and you acknowledge what's going on. What am I feeling? What's happening? And you take inventory of the entire thing. This applies to anything in life. Anything in life. Anything in life. And you come into acceptance of it. And then you can get into action. But only after you've come into acceptance. Because then you're free of the ego desire to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Or to fucking prove yourself or whatever. And then you could do the divine action. The God action. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I brought that up. but No, it's... I was asking you about how, because that's the one thing I feel like there's an awareness of really like most of my life, you know, I, I feel as though I'm hitting the mark on things, but my body, my body is just like, and it's not terrible. And I have a, I have an awareness that it could be a way worse, you know what I mean? But it's the one thing where I, there's something I'm not letting go of in my body. It just feels like generally way tighter than it should be, you mm-hmm. know? But I'm so, it's probably, it's, it's also like one of those things where it's like, <laughs> we're talking about not partying and stuff. Like, this is actually something like, it feels like a little bit of a gift. Like, here's something to work on here. Uh-huh. When I feel like I want to step away from the world and be like the attention guy and listen to my fucking podcast, download my new music, <laughs> buy these tickets, get a chug bud. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Stevenson Ranch, blah, <laughs> all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like stepping into something like humbling, like, no, no, get your fucking, get your spine neutralized. Totally, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And uh, it's, well, but, I told you when you were in Austin, you should get in the hot tub every day and I do. just do your stretching. I do. You do that here? I do. Like, you have yeah, a hot every, tub here? We do. Nice. Yeah. And I, I definitely, taking inventory, definitely doing so much better for my body. Like, good. You know, I'm not drinking. Uh, I'm I'm conscious of the ingredients. Uh-huh. I'm getting great sleep. I'm waking up. I'm going outside. I'm taking walks. These great, are all dude. great things that I like. Oh. I, I you know, it's part of growing up, obviously. Absolutely. You know, but I'm doing that, and mm-hmm. the awareness of knowing, hey, I'm, I'm doing, you know, 
doing, you're doing, you're doing better. Time. You're going in the right direction. Yeah. But there's one thing where like I'll I'll find myself like I'll wake up pissed because I feel <laughs> my back. Like I'm like just like why you know what I mean? And I'm but I and I it's like been this exercise where I'm like no fucking smile. <laughs> you have a life where. You, I don't have to go grab my kids and get them and then go fucking sit in a cubicle. My fucking back would be fucked yeah. if I was driving around, picking my kids and never being able, like I have a gym here. I'm, I have a hot tub. I'm able to, I totally change the perspective on it from being, waking up pissed when I'm in my, I'm in a dream scenario, you know? Yeah. And it's like, dude, I th there's, there's a lesson in that in itself. It's just like, no matter where you get and what you achieve, there's a whole new set of oh, data yeah. that's at every single point in life where Absolutely, you're going to have a whole, a whole new set of challenges or things to face or things to overcome or things to achieve even, you mm -hmm. know? So it's almost like, oh, I actually have the tools to achieve something here. Like, totally, man. I have a path to... Now, it, it's interesting. I find myself becoming disappointed in myself because, like, there's, there's certain actions taken, like... I just don't want to fucking do yoga every day. Mm. You know what I mean? And I know it's the best thing for me, but I'd rather go and uh, I find myself in the gym doing like the same old like herky jerk. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but then I'm bitching about, it. so there, there's something there, you know, there's something, but it's like, well, there's a balance too. These are great Maybe. challenges to have, you know, totally. like some rise to the occasion and get your body in order, yeah, you know? Brother. And I'm doing a lot of things going in that direction. Now, is it, is it to my satisfaction to where I'm like, very self-satisfied with my efforts and actions towards it no you know but i i also feel as though that serves a purpose in my life where i am absolutely you know what i mean absolutely we uh i mean it's always it could go for hours and hours yeah i know but this, this is a great it's, one dude. it's a never there's no starts and ends to our yeah. part to, to any of the conversations i know it's good because we don't as much as i think we get to keep up with each other's lives on social media and you see it but we're also talking about wanting to unplug and, yeah. you know, like there are these times where you step into yourself and it's totally away, but it's great. This is like a great mechanism just to catch up. I love up it, and dude. I do love it in a, it. Thank do it in you. A, Thank you for hitting me up. Of course. Of course. Yeah, you're probably our only visitor. I don't I know. Maybe that. one other. Maybe one other. Just Last thing on the body stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I've talked to you about this book before. You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. I love Louise Hay. Yeah, check that book out. She has a whole thing in there. Every part of your body and the psychosomatic or emotional connection. I'm doing it like I'm not doing what I was just circling. It's just like there's something that I need to fucking release, let, let go of so that I can just offer myself because I know like the breathing. I don't do the breathing enough, you know, like. <sighs> Nearly enough when I know, I know. You guys could come to hot yoga tonight. I teach at 8 p.m. Hot you? yoga, Burbank. I'm coming. Hot as fuck. Let's do it. All right. It's Bikram. It's the best thing for your back. I've done, I've done it. And I've done, that's, that's, is Bikram hot and also like. 26 postures. And it's kind of like a flow. You're moving a bunch. Uh, of, or is Bikram. It's less of a flow. Okay. So I don't know if I've done it's this. It's great for your back. I would love to do it. I'm coming. All right. Dope, man. We'll do it. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I, there's something for me to like just shed so that I can be all in. Cause it's the one thing in my life that like, feels dude. as though it holds me back where just ask, yeah, ask what that is. What am I holding on Asking to? Asking and is given. I'm reading that right now. What am I holding on to? What do I need to release? And all of a sudden, dude, you're just going to know you're going to, I'm going to get a text at 2 a.m. <laughs> Eb, I figured it out. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> I will. We'll come tonight, please, dude. Yeah, you guys will and love then, it. And we'll fucking we're talking about it out back. Um, I got to do some cool stuff with like the Steves and. Let's go, man. And uh, you just call me, bro. You call me and let me know. I'll help pull it together. Yeah, let's figure it out. I've gotten some great experience putting events together got great people who are ready to rock and roll and mm -hmm. just can help facilitate and make it happen and because this is what we're doing and yeah, the fans dude. are always like yeah. all of our our people dude, your just, people would fucking love it yeah they're, and they're they're just getting i see more and more interest in in the way of life and mm -hmm. this type of vibe so be yeah dope as fuck bro be, be just some dope crib in montana or wherever and yeah 
We'll figure it out. It's dope. We should do that though. We're gonna really do cool. it. 2023, it's coming. Yeah. And then next thing on the list is you getting out to a show before, oh, before, yeah, before I ride off into the sunset somewhere and never definitely, play shows bro. again. <laughs> well, I was literally, dude, like on my way to the LA show and just had some family stuff pop off that happens. I had to take care of, but yeah. Definitely, dude. Yeah. I want to come see you now. Come see the Stevenson Ranch <laughs> vibes. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Great. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you, man. I'll come, I'm going to come to fucking yoga tonight. I love that. I'm coming. Okay. I'll send you the link and Doggo can get you all hooked up. Okay. I don't know if these guys will come, but I'll come. All right. Come on, Blue. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah? That's good. Yeah. Ice baths are good. I'm big. I, we, love, we, we love the cold. Cold is dope. It gives me a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get it. The breathing does too. Like, there's something, again, it's just some, something I want to, I got to just, the, for the, 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 literally the flick of the, the light switch go off. We're like, do this every day. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, I do, why not? You know, or, or five, six days a week. The breathing and the cold. I do it every day, man. I don't do a cold tub every day, but I do breathing every day. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We're wrapping. <laughs> Look at this guy. That's nice, Mr. Steve. Steve. You got a gift. How good he is. He's, He's a, a good, good boy. boy. He's a good boy. He's a thick, but thick ass boy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, bro. Great to see you always. See you. Awesome, Steve. Get out. I of love here. hanging with you guys. Yeah. We're gonna have to get. The, we'll get it to a diamond episode ten. We're halfway there. <laughs>